so let's start right from the beginning of Kabbalah Academy. The first panel of the life of King and Anna, right there, and he's been uh, for his childlessness kicked out. That is in the desert, and it's it's funny that they both pray. And again, it's really the link between the panel, which is always interesting, as much as, for example, this one, right? Uh, the mountain. See, so the mountain, the hill, is going up, and here on this one, the link is going down. Uh, when it's kicked out, you got a representation of Jerusalem, then you got another representation of Jerusalem right here. Uh, and the story really goes the same, and of course, the kid is coming, and probably the most famous is most definitely that kiss right there by Junto and then you have the kid which will be uh, the virgin of course there will be the presentation of the uh, virgin to the temple right here and then we keep going the second story you gotta say which is the one most uh, commented is this one right there huh? story of Mary what I like the most about that story is always that kind of a boredom of Peter it's kind of a classic I would say but this one in the visit of the Mitre is not there's no there's no boredom anymore right and then again, try to focus on the uh, story of the landscape as much as the main story per se. And I'm skipping a little bit on the virgin life to go straight to the uh, Baptize of the Christ. Um, so the first link is Story of Anna and Joachim. The second one is Life of Christ. And the last one is uh, the Persian per se. So this is this one, the Feast of Cana. It took me a while to recognize this one. I can focus. I really like the fact that they're going for it. Mm -hmm. And you have to count, of course, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, seven, of course, right? Uh, then you arrive to always Christ, which is after the table is always in movement. And probably the fact that we move from the uh, um, from the Buen Fresco to the uh, like this, right? To look at the Christ in movement, the Buen Fresco, right? Um, to the Seco Fresco. So that's true for the Ultramarine, which is blue, that is made half to Lapis uh, Lazuli. And that's why, because you really wanted that blue to be um, more vivid, that he decided to paint it. Uh, on top of another fresco that we get the two technique the bronze fresco and then the uh, fresco seco right uh, then you got the temple and finally we move to the more vivid one which is the uh, last uh, super I'm gonna go like this I got the last super right here yeah. then you move to the washing of the feet and probably the most interesting of all is definitely uh, Judas kiss right so I had to go back for uh, Judas kiss to the fact that this is Peter that is cutting the hair so when they arrive with Judas in the front and you know the kiss is a sign of recognition to arrive Jesus to make sure to arrive the good apostle 
Judas said, I'm going to give a guess of people who might know as Jesus, right? And Peter, the first one, took his glaive out. Well, technically it's text that one of the apostles cut the hair and attacked the hair of that guy go right there. And Jesus just stood to hear the hair was miraculously um, cured just in a second, right? Then you got you got the uh, torch of the Christ right there, and then you got the Passion per se, with the Crucifixion, and probably another famous panel is clearly the uh, deposition. The deposition is interesting because if you look at the life, uh, at the origin of the life, uh, when the Virgin is uh, giving birth, so it really have the look of the Virgin on the baby and the look of the Virgin. Right? This one has also been famous for the angel being like literally uh, desperate. Please notice that on the side you have Old Testament panels and fake marble treasure and glass panel right there. So here you got, for example, Jonas and the fish. I mean, I love it so much. I'm going to get that a tattoo <laughs> in a way, right? Finally, you got the uh, Noli Montaigne, I mean, which I'm going to show you right here. Uh, look at this one. There was, again, the movement and the, the, the liberty of, uh, for example, a flag, which is kind of a getting out of frame, right? And clearly, clearly when you look at these soldiers, you have the one, uh, even the pink, I think the color, the one by Piero La Francesca, that has been admiring so much, so much uh, lately. So. I'm going to make a comparison of this too, but please check my video on Giorgio La Francesca, uh, which is not a not even thing at it, but clearly uh, a reverse of uh, Jesus, which is the same time, but not exactly the same uh, scripture. Right, and finally, uh, going up, you find the same freedom of Giotto, which is uh, taking the hello to not paint all the characters, and then you just have the hair, and you don't have the entire uh, characters. Of course, this one sounds like nothing. But it's interesting because some of the apostles would decide to go on with the uh, message and Jesus coming back to the uh, apostles um, is again, they're not 12 uh, plus of Christ facing the people, but literally around the table like normal people. It sounds like nothing, but that's absolutely uh, unique. The deposition is really, the annunciation, so it's really interesting with the intro right there and the Virgin on the other side and finally you got the last judgment which interests me a little bit less right thank you so much for watching don't forget no matter what you do keep doing it with a smile you guys take care just want to end on this one in this uh world right there of the last judgment obviously so you got scrubbing himself on the bottom left uh, because uh, his father was badly lending money, was uh, named by Dente in the Inferno, he decided to buy the chapel, and it sounds like nothing, but again, Giotto was the first painter in the Western world to represent a kind of a story in the story, if you wish, because you have the chapel, which I just got in, painted right here. But I love that little detail next to it, which is most interesting to me. Look at that cross taken by Enzo. Okay, okay, but you also have this kind of a little character, kind of a soul right there, probably remembering these souls right here, coming out of the curtain right there. So I think there's a sense of humor in Giotto, which is always, uh, always interesting. I don't have much interest in Inferno per se, um, but um, yeah, kind of the humor, I would say, the passion, the emotion uh, in itself, right? Um, Let's try to give one more uh, opinion on the kiss up there. Uh, so basically, okay, focused camera. My camera is having a hard time focusing. All right, the really about the kiss is what have the, the volume, and I'm going to try to make some uh, comparison on this one. Really interesting. Okay, in the down 
there, so you got a few right there. Uh, when people go home, they got what not to do, like being envious. And this one is probably the most famous one because she still got the bag of money in the left hand, but the right hand is still trying to grab for something else, right? And the snake going out of the mouse is going back in the eyes because basically what it tells you is like you are your own damnation and because you're greedy like this one which is greva it's written in latin all over very easy to read in latin uh, so you can tell you are creating your own problem by for example renting more which is still a major problem of society right now as i'm working a lot on fast living i can tell that right